After being captured by Cad Bane and put into a cell on his new ship, the Justifier, Omega was transported to the abandoned cloudy world of Boravio, where the Kaminoans used to conduct cloning operations and experiments. Omega was eventually cornered, leading her into a room with ominous green tanks filled with mysterious and horrifying creatures. So which creatures were actually inside of these cloning tanks? Let's find out. Before we dive in, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below to be notified as soon as I release more awesome Bad Batch content just like this. So to start off, we'll cover the most obvious, and honestly, the least creepy looking clone in the tank, the one that fell on Fennec Shand, and drenched her in cloning juice. This creature is an early prototype Kaminoan clone, which didn't quite make it to full growth. For those of you who don't know, the Kaminoans originally turned to cloning after their planet was ravaged by rising floodwaters, and the only method they could use to keep their populations at the point of survival was cloning. Because of this, they did everything in their power to learn the ways of cloning and to perfect the process so that they would never go extinct. After this, they went a little bit crazy with the cloning and started tinkering with more extreme clones, as well as taking orders for customers around the galaxy to keep their economy afloat now that their world was ravaged by floodwaters. The Kaminoans absolutely would not still be around during the time of the Empire if it wasn't for their cloning efforts, so this is clearly a very early attempt at it. And compared to the other creatures inside of the tank, which I'm about to show you, this one came out surprisingly normal looking. And make sure you're subscribed because tomorrow I'll be covering Kamino's full dark history with cloning and how they were driven to do some pretty horrendous things to survive. Following that, we have the creature that Omega was staring at in horror, hoping she would not have the same fate. This one is just plain creepy to look at and appears to be an early attempt at cloning Solistans just based on the curve in the nose and mouth area. If you look at the other Solistans from the Battlefront games, the Clone Wars and of course the movies, you'll see a very familiar shape to their faces. Obviously, this attempt went horribly wrong, meaning the Kaminoans were likely pretty early on in their cloning history when developing this one. It could be that the Kaminoans were still completely inexperienced when producing these clones, making them fail miserably, or it could just be one bad clone from a batch which has been left here for many years after the operation ended. Either way, this is giving us a fantastic insight into Kamino's early cloning history. Following that, we have a clone inside of the tanks that is absolutely horrifying to look at and is pure nightmare fuel. This creature could be a botched attempt at replicating the Kitanak species from the planet Kurdo 3, who had a very interesting head shape. The Kitanaks lived in nomadic tribes of about 100 and were generally seen as a very calm species. Many of them would be abducted from their homeworld due to their nomadic nature and slightly lower awareness and sold to slave traders who would then force them to play instruments and work in very shady cantinas. One can even be seen in Return of the Jedi playing an instrument. The Kitanax didn't really have big visible eyes, which can be seen on the clone in the tank here, so you can definitely see the mistake in the Kaminoans cloning process. And with pretty much all of the clones in this tank, the one big problem that the Kaminoans seem to have is that they can't seem to edit the part of the process which puts eyes on their clones. Almost every single one is growing at least one eye. After this, we have a cloning attempt which looks pretty similar to the other one, but has some pretty notable differences with the head shape and having two eyes instead of one. This honestly could be a second attempt at cloning the Kitanax, just based on the nose position, but it does also look like it might be a very botched attempt at cloning a Mon Calamari. The two decently spread apart eyes, with the semi-curved mouth and large mass behind the head, could have come from the Mon Calamari. There are a few others it could be, so let me know down in the comments what you're thinking. Following that, we have a lizard-like creature. This is actually one of the better attempts that the Kaminoans have inside of these tanks. It definitely has some similarities to the Asalamari lizards, one of which was used by Thrawn when going up against Force users. These lizards were known for creating Force-neutral bubbles, which didn't fully eliminate the Force inside, but instead made it so that nobody could exert their will over the Force. A single Force-neutral bubble created by one of these creatures would span about 10 meters in radius. But when they join forces, these bubbles could span kilometers, being very dangerous to force users who were unprepared. And before we move on, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community which offers literally thousands of inspiring and practical classes in a variety of different areas. If you've recently watched The Mandalorian or The Bad Batch and want to know how to hone your cinematic, animation or editing skills, Skillshare has a range of courses with ones that will certainly match your needs. For example, you may want to begin your learning experience with Zach Mulligan's Cinematography Basics, which will give you an understanding of how cinematographers plan shoots, professional cinematic techniques, and how to bring it all together into a final product. The platform also has classes that will fit to both your schedule and skill level, meaning you don't have to worry about having past experience or cramming into a schedule. 
On top of this, Skillshare is incredibly affordable, coming in at only $10 a month with an annual subscription. There are also no ads, meaning you can stay fully focused on learning and creativity. As soon as you join, you can try out one of Skillshare's brand new live classes, allowing you to experience real-time teaching with popular teachers and other members just like yourself. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Check the link in the description down below. Moving back to the cloning of these lizard-like creatures, it would be pretty cool if the Kaminoans started their attempts at force-related cloning with the Asalamari, but it could also foreshadow that they will be deeply connected to Palpatine's cloning plans with Snoke, despite having a lot of it being done on Exegol. We'll just have to wait and see on that one. But now with various tanks showing up in The Mandalorian Season 2, the Vader comics, and now it's looking like things might be connected. Next up, we have a creature which almost reminds me of a Bith because of the massive head size, but this could really be any creature or species. They could also be from the Cynetine species which have massive heads and are known for their hyper-intelligence. These guys could even calculate hyperspace jumps without any assistance from droids or a computer, though it's pretty easy to see why the Kaminoans would have valued cloning them and may have wanted to produce them for their own purposes. You would also probably remember the Cynetine trainer on Kamino who was overseeing the Domino Squad. After this, we have one clone that almost looks like a pretty close attempt at cloning a hut. The body shape is pretty much the same, and you can definitely see some similarities with a young Road of the Hut. Obviously, the face is very off, but again, this could be down to the Kaminoans not having too much experience in the cloning game at this point. With the amount of wealth, power, and resources that the Hut Cartel had behind it, it would not be surprising whatsoever that they would want clones of themselves, or stronger variants of themselves, to help strengthen their criminal empire. Next is just a pure abomination with no explanation. You can pin any species you want to this, but this is just a complete and utter mess from the Kaminoans. Whoever created this one should be thrown into the depths of Kamino's ocean. If you have any guesses or predictions for this monstrosity, let me know in the comments down below. After this, we have a pretty tiny creature with no visible features except an eye perking out from the front. This could honestly just be excess biomaterial that just happened to grow an eye during the replication process. Something pretty similar happened with Lannery Brock, as she worked on her Alchemy of the Flesh experiments on board her ship. Alchemy of the Flesh was looked down upon by many in the Jedi Order at the time, but it did produce results that looked an awful lot like this one. And for the final cloning attempt inside of the tanks, here we have a weird failed creature that again has an eye just like the others, but seems to be growing a mixture of fingers and toes from each piece of flesh coming out of it. I'll leave this one down to you guys, because it could be made from the DNA of absolutely any species which is capable of growing nails. So that is everything we know about the cloned alien species inside of the tanks on the abandoned Kaminoan cloning facility on Bora Vio. But let me know if you think there's going to be a connection to Snoke and Palpatine's cloning plans in the comments below. Or also if you think these facilities will come into play during the Kamino Rebellion, which we all know is coming. In the Legends version of the event, clone anti-troopers were bred by the Kaminoans to fight back against the Empire, so I think something similar will definitely happen here. Since the Empire pretty much have a presence on Kamino, maybe they're forced to use Borovio as the facility to make these clones, because if they do it with the Empire right there, they're definitely going to be exterminated on the spot. They'll also have decades worth of research to go back to, in case they need something different from the Django Fett genome, since we know that's running pretty thin by now, and it doesn't look like they're going to be getting Omega or Boba back anytime soon. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel for tons more Star Wars lore and Bad Batch content. Thank you so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.